Greetings from Glacier Guides and Montana Raft Company. This video is aimed at helping our guests pack efficiently and show up the day of the departure prepared. The weather in the mountains can be quite variable and unpredictable. Our guides are here to provide a relaxing trip. However, being prepared with the proper clothing, your trip will be much more enjoyable. First off, there are several common options for materials that make up outdoor clothing, such as wool, polypropylene, cotton, silk, nylon, and fleece. When deciding what clothes to bring on your venture into the outdoors of Glacier National Park, there are a few things to consider. As a general option, cotton is never a good choice. Choose fabrics that are wicking and that they draw moisture away from your skin, like synthetics. Once cotton is wet, it takes an extremely long time to dry and does not preserve body heat well. So leave the jeans, sweatshirts, and cotton t-shirts in the car. Better options to choose from are polypropylene, fleece, nylon, and wool. The first three items are synthetic fabrics and are available at any outfit or store. The benefits of polypro and fleece are that even when wet, they tend to wick the moisture away from your skin whether it is rain or sweat, and maintains your body heat. They also dry out relatively quick, along with nylon, though nylon tends not to insulate well. Next we'll break down the packing list found on our website. Let's start with hats. A recommendation would be to bring both a shading type of hat to protect yourself from the sun, and a warm beanie for colder weather, preferably one that covers your ears. When choosing a top, there are a few things to consider. The main idea is to layer your clothes so you can adjust your body temperature according to the weather conditions and your activity level. You will need a base, mid, and outer layer. To start with, most hikers wear some sort of t-shirt. Synthetics are recommended. It's a good idea to have an extra layer for camp in the evenings. Changing out of your wet shirt keeps you warmer and prevents hypothermia, a consideration even in mild temperatures. Next, bring a long sleeve base layer that is lightweight to be worn close to the skin, such as thermal underwear. Base layer items tend to be made from polypropylene, capillene, or wool. Again, bring one or two extra. Over that, you can wear a vest for a little extra warmth or a fleece jacket. Fleece provides more insulation as it has more loft, meaning there are more air pockets in its design to trap your body's warmth. No matter what the weather report says, it is important to bring along a rain jacket. Aside from rain protection, this type of jacket keeps you warmer in windy conditions, as seen a lot when going over mountain passes, and prevents annoying bug bites. Make sure that your jacket actually sheds water, as the ability of rain jackets to resist water decreases with use. Breathability of your jacket is also important in order to decrease sweat levels, in turn keeping you warmer and drier. As for bottoms, most hikers choose some type of nylon shorts for warm days on the trail. For chillier days, you can choose to layer your shorts with a long underwear base layer or nylon pants. As with your rain jacket, we do recommend bringing a pair of rain pants. Again, they are useful in a variety of weather conditions and should be roomy enough to layer over your long underwear and shorts. For socks, these are somewhat a personal preference and depend on your boots. Some people prefer to wear thin sock liners along with a light pair of socks over them. This can help prevent blisters and rub spots. Others prefer to just wear a mid-weight hiking sock. Either way, you want to prevent too much movement in your boots as with a sock that is too thin, or having your feet constricted by wearing a sock that is too thick. No matter what you choose, bring two or three pairs and avoid cotton. Having the correct hiking shoes in some ways can make or break the trip. It is highly recommended to wear shoes that have been broken in. If you are buying new shoes for this trip, Plan to wear them a lot before the trip until you feel comfortable in them. We recommend a lightweight pair of boots, a step up from tennis shoes with a rugged sole and ankle support. A heavy duty high top leather boot isn't necessary. On our guided trips, you will be traveling on well-maintained trails, 
there will be little to no off-trail travel, and thus heavy boots are not necessary. However, if you have weak ankles and tend to have problems, look into boots with a little more ankle support, as the extra weight on your back will only make the issue worse. Extra items to consider would be gloves and gaiters, especially for the early and late seasons. A simple lightweight pair of fleece gloves should do. If you're doing a trip in May, June, or September, consider bringing a pair of shell gloves to wear over the fleece pair as you are more likely to encounter snow during these times along with colder conditions. Gaiters are optional and are beneficial during the wet or snowy times to keep your boots a little drier. Look for gaiters that are waterproof for extra protection. Deciding how much clothing to bring can be tricky. Of course, to save weight, people tend to want to pack fewer items. However, though the weather can be in the high 80s or even 90s during the day in July and August, it is not uncommon to see intense temperature swings between day and night. The temperamental mountain climate can change swiftly, and we have seen snowstorms, though rare, in the middle of August, catching many people unprepared. It is very important to be on the safe side. And that pretty much covers the clothing items recommended okay, ring, ring, for ring. Our guided trips. If you have any specific questions about clothing brands or material types, contact your nearest outdoor store. Also, feel free to contact our office with questions regarding your trip, and check out our other videos dealing with trip planning. Shantru in Achmishan, Achmishan, Savannah, take it that call